Welcome back. You're watching Indian Open. Let's quickly take a look at what's been happening with regards to the Asian markets and how they're faring at this juncture. Japan marginally under about a third of a percent. Uh, we've got a 63-point dip that's coming in. With regards to the SGX Nifty, uh, that two trades absolutely flat. Slight positive bias is what you've got in terms of the trade. Coming back to Friday's session, Neeraj, obviously, uh, you know, post the RBI uh, policy announcement, it was uh, tailspin for at least the Nifty Bank. Towards the end of the trading session, you saw those steep cuts that came about. Uh, and it's going to be important and crucial to watch as to, you know, how earnings take shape this time and whether or not there is more more damage to the already suppressed prices that we're seeing for some of these names. Yeah, that and uh, if the world setup is okay, then do we see a bounce? That's the other counterpoint because we're very close to the 50-day moving average and that should act as a crucial support. So if the world stays okay, maybe we bounce back too. But yeah, all focus on earnings now. We really need India to deliver, especially after, or at least the commentary to sound positive after the corporate tax cuts. Yeah, let's see how that kicks uh, starts. So this week is going to be crucial with regards to that. However, it's a truncated week with the holiday being tomorrow. But also, let's take a look at what happened in the derivative space and what the setup was on Friday's session when we saw those steep cuts across the board. Namneet is joining us with more details on that. Namneet, come on. Good morning to both of you. Well, the Indian market snapped the three-week gaining streak last week where some bit of selling pressure was definitely palpable. If you look at both on Nifty as well as the bank Nifty futures, on Nifty first, there was unwinding scene. Remember, the index not only breached the 200-day moving average but also closed below that. And as Neeraj highlighted, today we will be watching out for the 50-day moving average which is somewhere about 11,090. But for the bank Nifty, there were fresh short positions definitely built up. So the premium fell to about levels of 120 to from levels of 140, 150. Open interest went up by about almost 4%. Volatility index has been in focus in the recent past. However, on Friday, it fell by only 6 tenths of a percent. But for the week, India WIX was up about 9%. Remember, if you look at the Nifty PCR now, that's the put call ratio that's fallen below the mark of 1. This is the current 1.97 as on Friday, vis-a-vis 1.17. Now, below one, it usually indicates a territory which could be oversold. So it remains to be seen if there is any sort of uh, recovery which can come in into the markets now. And talking about the options data, if you look at the distribution, considering it is a truncated week, you can see heightened activity. Uh, for this Thursday, maximum open interest on the call side, it is at 11,500, 400 and 300. And on the put side, even the lower level strikes are seeing accumulation. So 11,000 will remain key considering uh, the 50-day moving averages around that mark if you include the premium there. But on Friday, there was more of call writing seen. As you can see here, 11,400, 300. All these three strikes, by the way, together added about 40 lakh shares. Whereas on the put side, you did see maximum addition coming in for the 10,900 strike. On the stock futures front, uh, there was a fresh shorting seen for a couple of counters. So Colgate, which has been an outperformer in the recent past, saw uh, fresh shots. Kotak Mahindra Bank was weak from the private banking space. And short covering seen for stocks like Torrent Pharma, as well as Apollo Hospitals, which ended the day in the positive. Very quickly on the FI side, uh, surprisingly, there were a lot of short positions seen, not only for index futures, but it was across the board. So the unwound longs added shots of about 4,500 contracts, but I think the most important data is on the option side, where we did see a lot of put longs being added, almost 43,000 contracts, and even call short, about 37 contracts were added. So ahead of the weekly expiry, there were a lot of short positions being added by FIs on Friday. With that, it's back to you guys. Right, Navneet, thanks very much for that. So that's something that you need to keep an eye on. Remember, any which way's last series was also heavy on shots and now we're still slowly but steadily still building up on that in the new series as well. Avinash Gorakshekar, a head of research at Joint Ray Capital Services, is joining us on the show right now. Avinash, good morning to you. And I'll quickly start off first with Z and the, the announcement of the additional pledge that was made. Um, although they have said it doesn't increase their debt, um, uh, to anything more than what it already <coughs> is, but just to, that it could really dampen sentiment with, to an already beaten down stock. Uh, Devin, I think it's a negative surprise clearly, and I think uh, in all probability, you know, today we could see a gap down opening because the markets were definitely not expecting uh, this news flow at all. I think a further, uh, you know, pledging uh, for the Z uh, promoter share is definitely something which uh, would obviously dampen sentiments, and I think uh, this is something which the stock had seen a significant overhang. You know, I think clearly they missed the earlier deadline, so I think this news flow is obviously negative. I think fundamentals apart, uh, you know, the business continues to grow the uh, you know the balance sheet is fairly neat with a fair amount of cash on the balance sheet but sentiments definitely would get impacted and i think uh, you know it would be better for investors to stay away for some time uh, until the dust settles down all right uh, 
But just for people who already have it in their portfolios, hmm. Avinash. I think uh, Devina here... It's like you're not possibly getting an exit right now. No, I think Devina clearly, uh, you know, this was definitely not expected from the promoters. And I think uh, uh, they would obviously have to pay a price in terms of the price in the near term. So I think investors, uh, especially the institutional investors, don't have a choice. They would continue to hold on. But I would believe that uh, clearly, you know, from a business standpoint of view, uh, clearly a, a new investor who comes in at these levels would obviously get a better ROI. Uh, existing investors, I would suggest, should not panic because I think this is a sentiment call. It would probably last for some time. But uh, I think it, uh, I mean, one should only hope that these things don't happen again and again. You, you're advocating a fresh buy? of our high-risk investor in Z. Yeah, I think uh, clearly, Neeraj, if you see the balance sheet and the kind of numbers which the company presented in the quarter one and plus, uh, you know, quarter two, which would be coming up soon, uh, my sense is uh, a price below 200 would definitely make the stock look attractive from a longer-term perspective. I think it's one of the larger broadcasting players. It's got a recent, uh, you know, exposure on the OTT side. So I would believe that uh, there's a lot of value on the stock, but provided, you know, this overhang on the promoter pledging, you know, is, is, is completely out of the way, it might take some time. But uh, purely from a fundamental standpoint, I think the stock has seen a massive correction and business is definitely growing. It's not that business is stagnating. Hmm. Just a follow-up on the two financial names that have come in and I want to start off. HDFC Bank seemed pl uh, pretty straightforward. They've done well. I think they've shown it out in the thing, uh, in the commentary as well. How do you think the street takes Bajaj Finance though? Uh, the even growth, yeah, the quarter to update. It's moderated a little bit, but yeah. it is in exactly in line with what the management has said. No, I think, uh, Neeraj, if you see the uh, sequential growth, definitely there has been some disappointment. Uh, but I think it would be unfair for, uh, you know, the investors to actually compare this company purely on a sequential basis. On a YY basis, you know, the AUM growth has been very robust. Uh, new customer additions have also been very solid. So I think, uh, you know, when the company presents its Q2 numbers, numbers are definitely going to be extremely strong. I think apart from a minor jerk on the stock, I think uh, markets would obviously uh, like that this sustainability continues. And despite the the fact that headwinds in the NBFC space have been extremely challenging. So I would believe that you know the stock may not open with a big bang, but yes, definitely over the medium term, I think definitely any dip is definitely a good opportunity to accumulate. All right. Uh, we come back to you on uh, Concor as well and get your <coughs> thoughts on, on yeah. what this means for the stock. But just want to quickly go across to our research team to highlight some more stocks that are there in the news today and how they would be anticipated to open up and trade. Along with that, a few key brokerage calls as well. So I'm going to in for that. But first off, Nikki. Uh, well, we have discussed few of the important stocks in the first word, but then the other ones, we have five of them, Glenmark Pharma, where USFDA has issued a warning letter for companies Buddy Unit in uh, Himachal Pradesh. Uh, this unit is expected to contribute around 7% of US sales in FY20. Bosch, uh, where the company has reiterated that the weight is planned belonging to Powertrain Solution Division, that will continue to observe the no production days, and that could be ranging anywhere up to 10 days per month per plan during the third quarter. Ashok Leelan, where uh, the plans are various location will be observing uh, no working days ranging from 2 to 15 days in the month of October itself. Well, Yes Bank again makes it in the news. Uh, TPG, Carlyle Group and Fellon Capital, they are considering buying stake uh, in Yes Bank. That's the ET uh, report that we're talking about. And last on the list, this one is an interesting one, where Manpasan Beverages, Poranju has uh, picked up around more than 0.5% stake in the counter. Now remember, this is a counter which has witnessed uh, a complete uh, destruction shareholders well, down and out by as just 99% in last one. Your. All right, Nikki, thanks very much for that. Samit, what are the brokerage calls this morning? Well, a couple of them. First one is on Godrej. Consumer West City has maintained its neutral rating with a target price of 655. Now, this is after Godrej released its quarterly updates. Now, the brokerage believes that the company could be among the few staple companies in India where domestic volume growth could improve sequentially in the backdrop of the general consumption slowdown that we have seen. Now, the brokerage also thinks that the negative contribution of pricing uh, mix has also widened given the increased promo promos, offers, and price cuts in soaps and home insecticide segment. On the overseas market, the brokerage believes that is a mixed trend with good growth in Indonesia and disappointing growth in Africa, US and the Middle East. However, the brokerage expects margin expansion so as to continue for the company on the back of certain input cost positions, product mix and specific cost saving initiatives that the company has second. The second one is on Varak Engineering where Equirus has initiated a long rating with a target price of 546 rupees. Now, according to the brokerage, market share gains in the lighting business will, led, will be led by new customer acquisition and geographic expansion. Also, higher orders from Volkswagen will be 
It helped improve the scale of operations in the global lighting business, says the brokerage. Now, this scale enhancement, backward integration, would drive the margin expansion for the company going forward. Along with this, capitalizing on BS6 opportunity by new product addiction and increasing content per vehicle will aid growth going forward, says the brokerage. Now, the brokerage is expecting the company's revenue, EBITDA and net profit to grow at a CAGR of 6%, 11% and 17% respectively over FY19 to FY22. All right, Samad, thanks very much for that. Nikki, thanks a lot for covering the stocks and news. But Avinash, uh, quickly coming back to Concord then, a bulk of their claims being rejected by the DGFT. How does that weigh in on the stock? Because it's already run up quite a bit uh, of late. No, I think in the near term, Devinag, uh, this is definitely something which is uh, a small negative surprise and you could possibly see the stock correcting a bit. Uh, most of the run-up for Concor was uh, obviously uh, largely due to the fact that it's one of the candidates for strategic divestment and I think the markets are pen penciling a higher valuation for the stock. Uh, I would believe that, uh, you know, I think uh, longer term the uh, earning triggers definitely remain intact because it's a large player on the logistics uh, space, especially on the rail business side. So I would believe that, uh, you know, investors need to take a longer term call. This news flow is negative, but in the near term, uh, I would believe that any dip should be used to actually accumulate it. I would be not be surprised that going forward, you know, once uh, a new strategic investor comes in and there is a management change, uh, there could definitely be a complete turnaround in its operations. Okay, well, but today, so uh, Avinash, again, just to get this clarity for our viewers, would you believe that if there is a fall today, which is in all likelihood going to be the case, yeah. you would use a large dip to buy? What are those dips at the, or what are those levels at which you would think becomes a good investment opportunity? I think, uh, Neeraj, it's around 600 odd uh, rupees. I think anything uh, below five, uh, you know, 600, say 550, 570 odd. I would believe that most of the run-up has happened largely because of the strategic divestment news flow. And I think this is definitely something which is quite significant and a negative surprise. So maybe for the near term, you know, the stock could correct. I think uh, liquidity in the stock is fairly limited. So uh, one uh, probably may not be able to actually uh, indicate what kind of drop it could happen. But clearly, I think if the stock corrects by, say, 7 to 8%. I think it's a definitely good entry point from a longer term perspective. Well, let's wait and watch. I think the math seemed to suggest that uh, the hit could be close to 10 rupees, which is 50% of the EPS. But extraordinary loss, not an operational loss. Having said that, since there is a hit, let's wait and watch what's the quantum of cut that we see in the stock today. Um, let's talk technicals though for a bit. Uh, we've discussed fundamentally some of the key names. Uh, let's talk about the technicals. Get in Amit Harchekar. He's director at Index Genius Investment Advisors. Johns us on the show. Amit, good morning. Thanks much for joining in. And uh, good call last week, Amit. Uh, you were negative when most of the street was bullish. The call paid off well. What do you do now with the bank nifty or the nifty this morning? Uh, well, good morning to all. Uh, see, first of all, after yesterday, last week decline, nifty has now confirmed a trend reversal uh, on the long term charts. Uh, if you see from a pattern perspective, uh, Nifty has formed a bearish evening star pattern. That generally is an indication that this bear market may rarely, may, rarely may be over. We are looking for a target around 10,700, 10,800 in the Nifty. So what we would suggest is uh, the low of the spinning top what we had two weeks earlier turns out to be uh, 11,410. So I think 11,420 should become as a stop loss for your short positions. and. We are suggesting you know, playing again for the short side for the target of 10,800. For Bank Nifty, again, we have seen a similar reversal. So we believe uh, 28,300 should be the stop loss for your short positions. And we are looking for a target of 26,500. Uh, Even from a global perspective, uh, uh, the reason to worry comes from the uh, bond deals. If you see German 15-year bond deals, they are giving signs of a bottoming out and we are expecting the bond yields to jump from negative minus 0.4% to plus 0.3 percent in the next six months, and that should help uh, uh, good to, uh, should provide a good shorting opportunity for Indian markets. So we believe it, it's a, a negative trade for uh, rupee as well as Nifty in the coming week. Mm. Okay, so in light of this bearishness that you have on the index, what are the stock specific calls that you have for the morning, Amit? Well, I will uh, still continue with my sell call on Indusind Bank. I think this uh, Indusind Bank has completed a larger triangle and after closing below 1300, we are looking for a target of 1165 in the short term and on the long term charts, we are expecting a target of 800. So uh, for the current week strategy, we would recommend again going in opening short positions at these levels. 
stop loss would be at around uh, 1315 and uh, target at 1165. Uh, our second call would be opening up short positions in Z futures. Here the rational is uh, Z Limited has breached the 3600 day moving average that generally confirms the end, uh, end of the product life cycle. So we believe this stock has a more room for downside from current levels. So the 3600 day moving average at current levels uh, is placed at 263. So we are recommending that as a stop loss and we are looking for a target of uh, well below 185 in the coming weeks. We'll come back and talk about a few other stocks with you as well. Uh, talk about Titan and what to do with that one. Um, saw some uh, weakness in Friday's session after holding out really well for the previous few trading sessions as the market started to look weak. But uh, onto a special segment, Bloomberg Edge for now, where Yash Padia tells us about a pattern that the Bloomberg terminal has thrown up on a particular stock. Yash, what's the stock on the radar today? Morning, Vivina. So we're looking at torrent power on the charts and uh, there's a sell signal coming in on the back of the trender indicator, which is a proprietary Bloomberg indicator. Now, uh, the trender uh, basically help, uh, uses uh, the average true range for the purpose of calculating a buy or a sell signal. Uh, how does it generate a buy signal? Well, the trender line changes its color from red to green, which is a bullish indicator. Uh, indicator and uh, it generally, uh, you know, changes its color from green to red, which is an indication of a sell signal uh, and the indication of further weakness coming into the counter. Now, coming back to the price chart of uh, Torrent Power, we saw that after for the last uh, two trading sessions where it was managing to hold above the trend line, it finally gave up and fell close to about a percent or two percent uh, in yesterday's day of trade. It's not a very volumes heavy counter, but we finally saw after two to three consecutive days of holding above the trend line uh, that the stock has managed to close below it. So uh, the trend line over here is the one in the green and the stock has managed to close below that mark. And on account of that, uh, the trend has changed its color from green to red. It was only for a very short period that we saw this happen. Uh, obviously, there was positive news flow uh, with respect to the tax cut and all, and that's the reason why we saw the stock move up. But this is uh, just the, the repetition or the continuation uh, of the trend because uh, the Friday's stop is also coincidentally the top of Thursday for the stock, which is generally a bearish indicator that uh, the stock is not able uh, to move higher on the daily time frame. Uh, so the upper shadow over here, that shows the highs of the candle. And and both the candle have almost an identical high and then we saw the big fall uh, in Friday's day of trade. Uh, the trend are two giving a negative signal. There is a strong support at around the mark of 276 where the 100 day moving average is. Uh, but should it manage to break below that mark, uh, the next target for the stock could be around 269 and then uh, for the lower. Okay. Yes, how well has this worked in the past? So four out of the last six times uh, that the trender indicator has in fact given a negative call. The stock on an average on a closing basis in the next one month period has managed to give almost 6.5% kind of a return. Great. Thanks very much for that, Yash. On a one month basis, 6.5% not bad at all. Um, you know, coming back uh, to a few stocks, and I was talking about Titan. And, you know, last week and over the last 10 days of trade, you've got a slew of brokerages giving a higher target price to Titan. The stock managed to, you know, wither out the, the dips of maximum number of days where we've seen a downfall on the index and the broader market space. But Friday sessions looked slightly sloppy. It was down about three, three and a half odd percent. But I mean, sort of checker, what would you do with the Titan? Well, I would be quite cautious on Titan at these levels, mainly because if you see the Nifty Consumer, Consumer Durable Index, that has completed a rising wedge on the long-term chart. So we believe. Uh, this would be negated only in case Titan manages to sustain about 1325 on a week on week basis. So at these levels, I think it becomes a good shorting candidate with a stop loss of 1325. And we are looking for a target of around 1200 uh, on one to two day perspective. Okay, that's Titan. Uh, the other one also being Yes Bank and Avinash. <laughs> what should you do with Yes Bank? No, it's an important question, really, because a lot of people are trading this, are thinking of investing, etc., and lots of news flow surrounding it. Because as well. the <coughs> price is, is suddenly just looking uh, appealing. I mean, at 40 bucks, with the promoter overhang out of the way, with Mr. Ravneet Gill making comments saying that we'll raise 1.2 billion dollars at one go, and that time could be sooner rather than later. I mean, the pieces are sort of. No, I think, uh, Devina, the. Uh, 
uh, fund raising is definitely positive news but i think uh, what the market possibly is looking at is if the funds are raised at this point of time it's going to be extremely dilutive for the book value and uh, that is something which uh, obviously the markets are looking at uh, very closely and i think uh, quarter 2 and quarter 3 are unlikely to show any big positive surprises on the asset quality side Uh, so I think it's better to wait and watch. We But have is it likely to be negative? Is the question. Do you feel the watch list of ten thousand crores that they earlier stuck to yeah. will change? No, I think uh, I don't think that is going to change dramatically, uh, Devina. I think clearly asset uh, stress is yet going to continue, and I think you will probably get some fair amount of uh, idea. You know, once the Q2 numbers are out and you get a fresh uh, management commentary on the watch list, a 10,000 crore watch list is definitely a very large number. They've got a lo- lo- very high exposure even to the real estate uh, segment, and I think that is something which the market is also worried about. Uh, apart from the fact that you know there are some corporate uh, you know exposures like India Bulls Housing yeah, where they have an exposure. so i would believe that you know in the light of so many uh, you know kind of negative news flows it would be better to wait and watch i think just looking at the price and deciding to buy uh, would be a little tricky uh, i would still stay away i think it's better to wait for the q2 numbers hmm okay so well let's wait for the q2 numbers but from a trade perspective it's very very active i must say for somebody who's a high risk trader amit harchekar i know you're negative on banks and bank nifty by and large how would you trade yes bank <coughs> Well, yes, bank. Uh, we uh, we believe it's still it's a good shorting opportunity. Now, if you see the 30 days historical volatility for yes, bank data has uh, should uh, moved up to 142 percent. Remember, similar up move in the 30 days historical volatility was seen in Reliance Capital when it was trading at around 130, and we know right now the Reliance Capital is trading at uh, around 28 rupees. So we believe yes, bank uh, is uh, moving on the similar path. We are expecting the stock to become a single digit stock. So. I would say keeping a stop loss of 48 on a positional basis I would suggest uh, opening up fresh short positions. You know the other um, set of companies that you got to monitor amongst news flow uh, one of them is uh, Glenmark and we'll talk about that. I also want to talk <laughs> the too much of banks but I think two or three banking stocks that have fallen quite a bit want to get Avinash's perspective on whether you should buy them or no. But first Glenmark and then I want to talk about Axis Bank and IDFC First Bank. First Glenmark. The news flow is in yeah. the most positive. How much of a reaction do you anticipate? No, I think uh, it's definitely negative, uh, Neeraj, and I think uh, this uh, negative news flow has actually happened quite frequently. So I think you know today you could probably uh, find the stock uh, definitely coming under pressure, and I think in all probability, probably the second quarter and the third quarter in terms of numbers could be a little depressing. So I would believe that uh, you know within the pharma space, with so much negative news flow around, it's better to avoid Glenmark as of now. I would believe that it could definitely dampen the earnings growth, considering that uh, this is an important filing, and unless uh, the management gives Give some clarity as to how this is resolved. I think the markets would definitely look at it in a negative way. Mm. Okay, so Glenmark is one. The other um, set of stocks are the two banking names of Vinash, uh, Chalk and Cheese. But still, let me bring them up because they've fallen quite a bit. One of them is Axis. The last week, along with the Bank Nifty, Axis Bank has fallen quite a bit. The fundraising news and yeah. the fundraising element has been around. But at these valuations, does Axis Bank provide an opportunity to get in? i would believe neeraj uh, it's already below the qip price you know recent offer price and i think uh, looking at the kind of uh, management commentary i would believe that uh, the second quarter could be a little challenging but hopefully the december and the march quarter could be a lot better and i think uh, we have seen a lot of write offs happening on axis bank so i would believe that anything uh, say around 625 630 odd levels for axis bank could be a good entry point i'm not uh, negative on the bank but i would believe that uh, looking at the trend in the stock as of now uh, it would be a good accumulation kind of candidate i would not be surprised that within the corporate banking uh, you know uh, uh, radar i think icici bank and axis bank definitely seemed well positioned to deliver a strong set of numbers you know for the second half okay a quick uh, chart check on our icici bank amit well i say icici bank i think uh, the stock has clearly uh, given a strong reversal on a weekly basis mainly because uh, bank nifty it holds good, decent weightage in the bank nifty and since there is a evening star pattern in bank nifty we are expecting icici bank to uh, decline towards 385 zone so right now the strategy would be again opening up short positions uh, at these levels stop loss would be 425 on a closing basis and uh, if 385 gets broken on a uh, daily closing basis we can even expect levels of 340 okay levels of 340 that's interesting that's quite a significant cut yeah. from these levels yeah you know even the other thing is we'll talk all talking about this consumer slowdown and we'll of course talk to the auto uh, dealers today 
But if Amazon and Flipkart statistics are to be believed, uh, the great Indian sale that they have, some astounding sales, astounding financing, TVs, cell phones, laptop, like there is no tomorrow. We, all, we spoke to people and yeah, we, but if we, they if they're indicating that electronics was never a pain point. White goods is never a pain point. We had, uh, you know, manage, uh, uh, managements coming from Chroma and uh, the other, uh, you know, Vijay sales. And they've said that they're not witnessing a slowdown. I mean, white goods are still being purchased. And electronic items, anyways, excite a lot many more people. Yeah, so maybe you're right. Maybe it's a lot of it's got to do with electronics. But, but still, I'm, I'm, my only larger point is, I mean, if Amazon is saying that 98.4% of India's PIN codes were covered and 88% customers were from smaller towns, which just shows that this geography of purchasing Indian goods is spreading. And uh, there may be a slowdown, but maybe just maybe the festive season is, uh, might spike up the sentiment. Today's dealers' conversations will probably show something about autos as well. Yeah, and so, so it's... it's you know, we are sort of Mukherjee saying essentials are not uh, getting affected. They are buying is into essential, uh, you know, consumption names, so that's working well for them. Electronics, white goods is working well. So maybe you know, few specific pockets. Discretionary is probably is something aside from you know the larger ticket purchases is something that's weighing down in terms of the overall market. But 11 seconds to go for market pre-open. We'll talk about all this and more in just a few. Se just a few moments. So the SGX Nifty up up six odd points right now. So absolutely flat. On the index, uh, you're up about half an odd percent this morning. Uh, Sensex is showing you a slightly more skewed open uh, with regards to stock price moves as well. So we'll come back to this in a bit. Uh, coming to individual counters, then and Z first up opens up 10% lower. We'll wait for uh, you know. Uh, this to cool off, whether it sticks to this 10%, comes down or no, um, is something we'll have to keep an eye out on. Uh, the other one is Bharti Airtel, which is down about 2 odd percent. Grasim m, m looks weak, about closer to a percent or so. But uh, more gains than losses. So Yes Bank again takes uh, to being the top uh, stock on the index this morning, about 10% higher. HDFC Bank is the other one. Uh, you've got 2, 2.5% increment there in this in bank. HCL Tech is up 1.9%. Should see what Bajaj uh, Finance is doing. That's up 1%. Vedanta Tata Steel Coal India. So the metals pocket is doing okay. ICICI Banks at 417. And Titan 2 perks up in trade today. Followed by Britannia, Indian Oil, HFC Limited, and Reliance Industries, which is up closer to a percent right now. For the currency, there's some amount of weakness. 71 is where the rupee versus the dollar is currently trading at. So we're going to be watching out for uh, how that plays out. Aside from that, um, I just want to quickly pull up a BPCL2 to see how that one's doing um, after the last um, few weeks of uh, extremely positive trade. 505 for BPCL loses outside. Yeah, I think this will be a factor of when does the clearance come in from the cabinet. Uh, let's wait and watch uh, for that. 505 currently for BPCL. Um, two or three names, uh, Concor should be top draw really today. Let's wait and watch if it's correcting and correcting thick and fast. For now, no, not so much, just about a percent. Let's wait and watch uh, what happens during the course of the pre-open rates. But no big reaction at, at the start, which is interesting. Glenmark is the other one which you should monitor because of the US FDA uh, news and about a couple of percentage points lower. So no big reactions on the negative side, I must say, pretty interesting. Uh, let's see if uh, the the exhibitor stocks are doing well, uh, Inox as well as PVR, because the news flow around the kind of money that these companies are raking in because of the box office collections of the last few days has been pretty strong. Inox at least starts off well, PVR marginally. So I think we'll give these rates a chance to stabilize and then talk more about them. For now, it certainly looks like the banking and the large banking names are the ones in focus. Yes Bank qualifying it as a large because it's a part of the index. But yeah, Yes Bank, HDFC, Bajaj Finance, etc. are the ones that you need to very, very closely monitor in the session today. So let's wait and watch what happens to all of those. You know, HDFC Bank, and if we talk about this every time that if HDFC Bank gives you a moment of weakness or, or otherwise you should go out and buy it because uh, just the fact that if these banks are growing or if HDFC Bank is growing at X percent or Bajaj Finance is growing at a Y percent, they are growing at that level because they, they are choosing to grow. Uh, right now, the, the scenario is such that they can grow at almost any pace that they want to because others are not growing and there's a demand as the, as the sales show as well from Amazon and Flipkart. But uh, if these companies are choosing to grow at the levels that they are, 
and it's probably by design. So HDFC Bank, after that last week of turmoil, starts off likely to start off slightly positively. Uh, Amit, we don't talk about this one normally as a big trading play because a lot of other stocks are a lot more volatile. But in light of the fact that you are you might be negative on Nifty Bank, but HDFC Bank has positive fundamentals which they have released. Can this one defy the Bank Nifty trend? Not really. In fact, uh, if you see the recent high which was at around 1275, it's outcome of an uh, uh, extended channel on the upper side. So whenever the stock completes the rising channel, it generally uh, confirms an end to an uptrend. So that's why we have seen a sharp reversal after testing levels of 1275. Uh, I would not hesitate to go short even at these levels because the stock has clearly given a, a three bar reversal and I would suggest uh, one should keep a stop loss of 1240 on a closing basis. We are looking for a target of around 1100 in STFC Bank because that turns out to be the support of the rising channel. Once that gets bro broken, I think we can easily expect further cut of 10 to 12 percent. That's an HDFC Bank. Well, uh, Nomura has come out with a note on Indian auto sector. It has warned of a risk of a steeper slowdown going ahead. Yatan Mota is here to take us through Nomura's rationale for the same. Yatan. Uh, Devina, post the September numbers, uh, you know, Nomura has come out with an update note on autos. Uh, they believe that uh, you know the current slowdown could elevate from the current levels. In fact, uh, Nomura in the report says that the risk of uh, slower recovery and steep slowdown ahead persists significantly. More importantly, they do believe that the passenger vehicle industry growth is struggling due to the ri rising regulatory costs owing to the emission norms and safety norms, including BS6. And also, uh, not only that, the two-wheeler industry is also facing higher costs risk. Uh, because of which there could be, uh, you know, further compression of margins for OEMs as well as uh, slower demand ahead. Uh, in the medium and heavy commercial vehicle space, which is the third segment of the auto segment, uh, here uh, they do believe that the volumes uh, which were expected for the medium and heavy commercial vehicle segment, they are still below the replacement, uh, uh, you know, uh, level uh, as projected. Uh, so, you know, usually there is a replacement demand which comes to the marketplace and the demand in the marketplace is still lower than that. So that is something uh, which Numura believes could impact uh, the uh, commercial vehicle segment uh, players moving ahead as well. In terms of, uh, uh, you know, levels, uh, Maruti Suzuki, they have downgraded the stock to reduce and cut the target price to 6,202 rupees. Uh, of course, it has been almost a 90 rupees kind of a price cut which has come in from Nomura. Tata Motors, they have cut the target price to a level of 109 from the earlier level of 146. Uh, as I was mentioning about the commercial vehicle space and the risk of slowdown, Nomura also has cut the target price of Ashok Leyland to a level of 84 from the previous level of 87. When it comes to M&M, Hero Motor Corp, uh, Bajaj Auto, uh, as well as uh, TVS Motors, uh, the rating is, uh, you know, neutral as well as reduced respectively. Here also they have uh, made some marginal changes in the target prices. Uh, but on overall basis, Nomura now believes uh, that, uh, you know, the auto slowdown uh, could last or persist, uh, you know, for a longer period than earlier anticipated. Right. Yeah, then thanks very much for that. So, uh, no light at the end of the tunnel yet, according to Nomura, with regards to the auto numbers. Uh, Avinash, we're going to start seeing numbers coming out from this week itself. Mm, start off with the IT space. And what is your expectation of whether or not you'll be positively surprised? Um, you know, the rupee has, in terms of the movement this quarter, it, it started off stronger around 69, 69 and a half, but then through uh, the last two, three months around 71, 72 is where it's been at. But I don't believe that uh, rupee as a factor will play, have too much of a play for in terms of the IT numbers this time as well. What's your sense? No, I think uh, more important would be the kind of, uh, you know, commentary from the management on the client additions and the overall uh, traction in the U.S. market. I think, you know, companies like TCS and Infosys, I think uh, both have uh, large exposures to, to the uh, digital segment. I think uh, that would be one sector where possibly some more news flow, uh, you know, market would definitely uh, like to await. Uh, more importantly, you know, the dollar guidance, I think in terms of uh, the dollar revenue, what kind of uh, growth numbers uh, Infosys and TCS actually predicts. In fact, TCS does not come out with earnings uh, numbers, uh, I mean guidance. But overall, I think it's going to be a much better quarter compared to the first quarter. And I think you could probably see some ramp up happening on the client side. I think the markets would obviously look at the commentary, Devina. Uh, as far as the uh, rupee uh, factor is concerned, I don't think that would be a major kind of, uh, you know, traction for the earnings recovery, at least in this quarter. 
better. So I think it's going to be new client wins and obviously the overall traction in the US market. And I think uh, numbers may not be all that aggressive, but commentary and guidance forward is going to be uh, quite crucial. Your pre open rates are settled, Avinash. 214 for Z Entertainment, 9.5% lower. So, you know, there might be intrinsic value. The promoter clearly sees that. The market doesn't. The Oppenheimer deal had done at 400. The stock is nearly 200 now. Exactly. Are you comfortable? Even if it's fun even if it is fundamentally a good stock, are you ready to buy into this technical weakness? In fact, Neeraj, uh, if you're looking at the next two to three years, I think if it's a short-term call, I think uh, obviously the market sentiment is negative. But if you're looking at the next two to three years, you know, once the dust settles down and the promoter pledging factor is completely out, which I don't think is completely, uh, you know, an impossible task. I think uh, I would definitely look at buying it, you know, if it uh, goes below 200 odd rupees, because clearly from a value perspective, this is not a name which is a small name in the broadcasting space, in the OTT space. Uh, and there's a lot of value on the balance sheet. I think it's a fairly uh, neat balance sheet with a lot of cash on the balance sheet. Uh, operationally, you know, the cash flows have also been very strong. So I think apart from the promoter pledging issue, I would believe that business is definitely growing. So clearly from a longer term perspective, it still carries value. You yeah. know, it's interesting and, and, and I was hearing Yatin and, and <coughs> the the overhang here is that with bulk of their holdings being pledged, you don't you can't time when, when somebody decides to dump the shares. And then they don't have the money for collateral. Exactly. So, so the technical so factor is pretty high. And that's what happened with Yes Bank as well, right? When Arnab decided to, to uh, you know, to, yes. to, to push uh, uh, the, the promoter pledges into the system. And, you know, Rana Kapoor obviously was very upset about the value that it got and, and the way it was sold. But you can't stop anyone from doing that, especially if, they, if you have 90% of your holding as yeah, I think you surmised it well. I think that's probably the factor which would be playing on the minds of some people. As we said, I mean, Avinash point, Avinash's point is fundamental, but there are technical triggers at play. Uh, you know, a lot of queries with regards to certain banks, and we'll try and take some of those. Yes Bank in particular, we've already spoken about it at length, but ask, um, IDFC First Bank and a couple of others too. But it's time to tell you all that you need to know to stay ahead in trade away since we are just minutes away from market open. First up, over 90% of promoters stake in Z Entertainment pledged. The management disclosed indirect pledges in a conference call. As per the new SEBI regulations, the stock likely to start off 9% lower. The Director General of Foreign Trade rejected 80% of Container Corp's claims for export incentives amounting to 860 crore rupees. Container Corp has stated it will contest the decision. BEML receives orders worth 729 crore rupees from Delhi Metro Corporation. In quarterly updates, HDFC bank loans grew 8% on a quarterly basis, picking up sharply from 1% uh, last quarter. Bajaj Finance assets under management grew 38% on a yearly basis against 41% last quarter. Yes Bank has filed an official complaint over alleged fake news being circulated on social media about the financial health of the lender. Lastly, US FDA issues warning letters for Glenmark's buddy unit in Himachal Pradesh. Actually, so a quick trade call, Amit Harchekar. Glenmark, 4.5% lower and rightly so. A lot of queries around it, notwithstanding the stock um, must be at fresh lows, if I'm not wrong. Would you go out and short it at 300 levels? Absolutely. I think the stock is into a deep bear market. Unless we have a weekly close above 350, the trend still remains down. We can expect levels of uh, 265 to 250 where we can expect an intermediate bottom. Okay. Avinash, uh, IDSC First Bank, also important from a perspective that if, you know, capital first business, which would have done well looking at the kind of updates that Bajaj Finance and some of the others have come in. Not, not comparing the two, yeah. but capital first is also a reasonable player out here. Yeah. Would you be a buyer in IDFC First Bank? Yeah, I think Neeraj, uh, from a longer term perspective, this price is attractive. But I think one needs to understand that, you know, post the, uh, you know, conversion of capital first into IDFC first into a proper private sector bank, uh, the CASA ratio still is pr pretty low. I think it's about 12, 12 and a half percent. So I think for them, cost of funds is going to be a critical issue. And I think uh, despite the fact that disbursals have been high, uh, there have been some legacy issues. I think the management has made it very clear that probably for the next one quarter, we could see some further write-offs from the IDFC legacy assets. So I think that would be a little overhang on the stock, but over the longer term, say over the next 18 to 24 months, uh, this is definitely a bank to watch out for and hopefully once the CASA improves and we don't have legacy issues relating to IDFC, uh, definitely, you know, the management has been very strong, openly ca canvassing that disbursements have been extremely strong uh, and they have been, you know, data mining a lot of new customers. So I think over the longer term, one could definitely expect a better risk reward. A quick word on some of these exhibitors, um, Inox, PVR and, and the kind of content pipeline that they've seen over the quarter. 
I think uh, both of them would do well, but I think uh, since both of them uh, are reasonably priced, I think they're not available cheap. I would believe uh, Inox would be a better bet, and I think clearly looking at the kind of movie, uh, you know, deal pipeline which is in the you know news flow at least for the next one or two uh, months, I would believe that uh, you know the third quarter is going to be a strong quarter for most of these uh, companies, considering the fact that typically you have many blockbusters opening in this quarter. So probably you know any dip should be used as an opportunity. Okay, into Inox or PVR or both? No, I would prefer Inox because uh, PVR, I think, to that extent is uh, you know largely the growth is factored in. Inox definitely also should benefit considering that it's a fairly large pan India player, but obviously uh, there are local uh, kind of appetites which actually help uh, Inox better. All right, uh, one minute to go for markets uh, to open. Amit Harchekar, your quick top call this morning. Well, I would short uh, Larsen and Tubro with a stop of 1465. Since Bharat 22 index has completed rising wage, uh, we are expecting a 12% fall into debt. So we are looking for a target of around 1300 on last and two. The second answer, Bank Nifty is likely to start off 175 points higher. Would you short it? Absolutely. I think uh, with a stop loss of 28500 on a positional basis, we are looking for a target of 26500 for the coming week. Okay, uh, viewers, please keep in mind, Amit has a positional call on the Bank Nifty. Uh, it may do something indifferent today, and I believe a lot of it could have be on account of HDFC Bank, which is likely to start off marginally higher, but could be volatile. It's had a bit of a fall last week. The quarterly update is not that bad, so HDFC Bank might actually not do bad. And that might have a big bearing on the Nifty and the Bank Nifty in particular. Stay on, gentlemen. We'll just take in opening thoughts from you before we thank you. But here's how the markets are starting off this Monday morning, the penultimate day before the Shera. Uh, marginally in the green for the Nifty and the Sensex, but the Bank Nifty is doing okay, 154 points, and we'll get to the reasons thereof. But not a bad start. Uh, the US markets, of course, did well. Asia was okay, but the, our markets start off okay. The mid caps and the small caps should come up on your screen, and let's see how they are doing, starting off flattish in the session. Let's get the heat map up on the screen and show you what's moving and what's not on the Nifty 50 first. Um, well, fair bit of green and HDFC Bank, the key reason why the bank nifty is doing what it is doing 1.29 percent higher accompanying it are yes bank five percent higher there is strength in access marginally but strength in access hdfc from the financial space is also not doing all that bad so those are the few names as a result of which the bank nifty was marginally in the green and uh, now it's marginally in the green by the way because a lot of other stocks are falling bpcl is down five and a half z is down five and a half IOC is down a couple of percentage points. Indescent Bank down about a percent as well. Bajaj Finance a percent and a quarter. So I reckon all of these moves are on account of the markets waiting for some announcement with regards to uh, divestment and not coming in. Therefore, the OMCs are now getting hammered out of shape. And very quickly, the Sensex and the Nifty have almost moved into the red. In fact, the Nifty has moved into the red and the back Nifty is flattened out. Um, <clears throat> couple of stocks that I think I want to highlight. Uh, firstly, companies on which the news flow hasn't been most positive today. Glenmark Pharma and Concord and both the stocks start off negatively. Glenmark 3.5, Concord 7% lower now. This is clearly correcting. Uh, what about companies that were trading at fresh highs or very close to 52-week highs in Friday's session? Let's pull them up. Affle India, Spandana and Avas. We have a rate on Affle which is about a percent higher. Devina, what are you spotting? Well, uh, you know, since we spoke about Z, the other two stocks, uh, you know, from the SL group, uh, Dish TV as well as Z Learn, they too over the last few days have been witnessing a fair amount of selling pressure. Today as well, Dish TV opens lower by 2% and Z Learn opens lower by about 5 odd percent. Edelweiss is some rating downgrades from Crystal and the stock's down about 6 odd percent. Remember, Edelweiss has been under tremendous pressure with regards to the, uh, the, the lap exposure that it has it's 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 exposure to property and developers is what's weighing down on the stock price as well uh, shipping corporation of india we spoke about that when hdil again is a small name but is down in today's trade by about six percent ashok leland they've said that they're going to uh, take no production days the stock's down and then you've got the likes of an nmdc down two percent bosch is down another two percent sun tv is also lower by two two and a half percent divan housing finance looks weak and then you've got a TVS Motors again down 3, 3.5%. So it looks like a day where there is a significant amount of weakness. Actually, if you look at the breadth of the market and the broader market space, it's more even keel. So you do have a fair share of gainers as well amongst the long list of losers. So I'm going to quickly take a look at what's the, the, the gaining end looking like. The likes of um, uh, Vodafone Idea, that's up 2%. You've got uh, 
AB Fashion, one and a half percent higher. LNT Finance, um, then you've got the BEML, which are looking okay in trade today. IDFC, Avanti Feeds, some of the names out there. Godrej Properties, back up above 1,000 prestigious states again in the green. And then Tata Alexi, which is up about one and a half percent in the session. 504 stocks advancing, 563 stocks which are trading in the red. Well, Z is down 13 and a half percent. It's just unfortunate the way the stock is falling. Really, 205 and correcting. But the what's come out of you syllabus? Know, I, I'm, sorry. I'm just wondering what those uh, four mutual fund houses who've agreed to hold on to the stock was so much. Uh, yeah, these are tough times for them as well. They still have to wait wait out six months of uncertainty by March 2020. I mean, yeah, this is this is tough. This is really tough. Uh, and I think questions will be asked them as well. But first, uh, for stocks that are moving and what's Devina is saying come out of syllabus is the reaction in OMCs. Amit Harchekar, very quickly, would you trade a BPCL or IOC? Well, I would short uh, BPCL because it, it has broken the support of 495 and we have a quite positive outlook on crude. See, we are expecting crude to cross $80 in coming weeks. So uh, we, we are looking for a target of 450 on a BPCL. Stop loss for the short trade in today's trade would be 497 on our closing basis. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the ones that are doing well, um, marginally at that, but HDFC Bank up about a percent, is that the best bank to buy Avinash? I think uh, clearly looking at the kind of 20% growth, uh, uh, you know, Neeraj, I would not be surprised that in the coming financial year, uh, they could possibly clock an earnings growth of at least 20 to 25%. And I think that is something the markets are extremely happy. Uh, asset quality has been extremely strong. So any dip, uh, probably Neeraj is a good, uh, you know, accumulation for this stock. I would not be surprised that, you know, quality would obviously get a decent premium, you know, in this kind of market. All right. Gentlemen, we'll leave it at that. Avinash as well as Amit, appreciate you both taking out your time this morning. Raja Jain, Chief Investment Officer at Principal Mutual Fund, is joining us on the show right now. Raja, thanks very much for taking out the time. Uh, we saw some stability post corporate tax uh, cuts pleasure. being announced, but I think the volatility is back in the market. Uh, after the initial euphoria thing, uh, you know, the dust seems to have settled, and we are back to uh, you know getting uh, a little uncertain about the earnings performance. With uh, with quarter two starting off this week. What is it that you'll be watching out for? Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, obviously, I mean, we are seeing the initial results come from IT companies. Typically, they're the ones who come out first. And I think the markets have been uh, disappointed in the first quarter numbers for earnings weren't great, one, one, nothing much to write home about. And uh, we don't expect substantial improvement uh, let's put it this way in Q2 numbers. Uh, IT, I guess, will grow around, say, 3% Q2 give or take uh, in terms of top line. Uh, margins probably remain steady or small expansion there, Q or Q again. Uh, autos clearly are going to see, I mean, we know volumes have been terrible for them across CV, passenger vehicles, two wheelers. So that's a big sector. And that doesn't look like doing too good. Um, we have financials. Uh, which is obviously the biggest chunk of the market. And uh, there, uh, both certainly NBFCs, the, even some of the smaller PSU banks, they could be, uh, there still remain lingering issues in terms of asset quality, though they are much lesser than they were. But uh, we are not seeing the kind of growth that we expected them to see at the beginning of the year. So overall numbers for the, uh, overall numbers for the uh, Q2 may not be great. To your point about this, the small pop-up or the bump-up that we saw post the tax cuts and so on, I think those are clearly very important, helpful measures, or more medium-term measures. Uh, but the near term, which is clearly the slowdown in the economy on the demand side, uh, so that certainly remains. So those things, what the government has done, even beyond the tax cut, you know, making it easier for people to do business, uh, helping export houses, export companies, auto companies by giving increased depreciation, trying to make working capital easier for construction companies by giving them payments on time and so on. Our measures are going to have an impact, but in the near term, no. If the near term is still the slowdown in the economy continues. So we'll actually watch how the festival sales actually unwind. So uh, we've seen a couple of these uh, large online marketplaces, yeah. and they have come out with strong numbers. Let's see how those, we actually will be watching uh, for the festival sales. Yeah. yeah. 
So what would what should the strategy be then, Rajat? I mean, obviously Sorry. all these factors will take some time to play out. So in the meantime, what does an investor do? No, I think uh, the good news, I mean, it's not only bad news. I mean, the good news is if you look at, uh, one, obviously, the softer interest rates, uh, two, the willingness of the government, the government actually like, knows, knows there's a problem, recognizes the problem, is taking steps to help the, the, the business uh, to get out of the problem. Uh, we had a good monsoon. Though some areas have had floods. They have their own challenges. But overall, we had decent monsoons. Uh, so there are, there are positives there as well. And the, the one of the also the valuations, of course, the earnings will see downgrades, but even accounting for the downgrades in earnings. We see the markets are not extremely, I mean, we are reasonably valued. We are not cheap. We are not too expensive, uh, especially if you compare the market valuations to the bond valuations. We don't come out too badly at all. So having said that, so what does the investor do at this point of time? Uh, you've got to probably focus on companies which are likely to see some earnings. Uh, growth and, uh, and and available more cheaply well. I mean, their markets are polarized. So you have on the one end, you have those consumer names, some select private sector financials who are extremely expensive. And on the other end, you have things, the cement sector or construction and so on, which are actually, you know, some ways, some cases extremely cheap. So it's a sort of a barbell that the market is, how the market is positioned this point of time. So you got to, I think it's tough to say, but you got to uh, look beyond the immediate future. You've got to look for the next one and a half to two years, not very far out, 18 to 24 months if you look at. You see where earnings are likely to come and where valuations are more reasonable. So probably build a more diversified portfolio. So it's, it's but I would slightly be cautious on the very expensive. I know they have, they have stood very well in the flight to quality and there's a reason they're expensive because they're quality businesses. But I think we are seeing that diversi there's a diversification. If you watch, I mean, there's the NSE Nifty index and there's an NSE Nifty 100 equal weight index. In the 100 equal weight index, every stock is 1%. And that's a very good way to tell you how the market's behaving. The Nifty is market cap weighted, so the larger stocks are, have larger weights in them. But the Nifty 100 equal weight, every stock is 1%. And in the last four to six, it's, it's still to make a trend, but last four to six weeks, what you're seeing is the Nifty 100 equal weight is only catching up with the Nifty uh, index. So I think they are seeing a broader uh, sense, uh, set of stocks doing better. Of course, I mean the, the environment is still very fragile, there's a little of risk off in the market and all, and, and the news flow doesn't help. But I think we are seeing the market looking to diversify itself along from a very, very narrow base of companies. Okay. Rajat, good morning. Neeraj here. Um, what's your sense as, a, as, as somebody who's investing public money Hi, into some of the uh, PSU names which are either divestment candidates um, or are finding favor because of a variety of other reasons. Are you inclined to take any of those bets at all? See, if you just step back a bit, actually the PSUs are very well run companies. I mean, not all PSUs, but they are no worse run. Actually, they are, some of them are very, very competitive operationally. The reason PSUs suffer is what I call the governance discount. Uh, because either they could be used in some cases uh, to sort of fulfill uh, public, to meet public needs and they could be pricing issues with, uh, like, for example, they may not have pricing freedom that they would like to have, things of that nature. But operationally, they are very well-run companies. So in some of those cases, when these companies are being acquired or sold out or privatized by the of a strategic sale to an outsider, I think naturally the value will be unlocked uh, because they the prices are lower, not because they're bad companies, or simply because of the governance discount that they, that they suffer from. And once that get, gets out of the way, and naturally there's that sort of unwinds. Um, so, yeah, I mean, these are some of the companies that the government has spoken about without getting into names specifically. I think they're all well-run companies, and I think there's a good, uh, they're good company that I think they should attract genuinely a good buying interest from strategic investors, absolutely. Okay. Um, Rajat, uh, just the kind of a day we have to call it a day right now because we just need to slip into a very, very quick break. Uh, but appreciate uh, your time. E even though it's a short conversation, we'd love to have you um, on another day at a longer time. But thanks so much for taking the time out today. My pleasure, Neeraj.
All right. Thank you. That's the view from Principal Mutual Fund. The market's down about a third of a percent. Keep that at the back of your mind. So even HDFC Bank is not able to save the Bank Nifty for now. Let's wait and watch if this lasts or no. We need to slip into a quick break, as I said, though. But on the other side, two very important conversations or interesting conversations. Firstly, has the festive season already started showing the signs of a turnaround in the tide for automobile industry. We speak to two automobile dealers about the same. And then a conversation with Vinayak Chatterjee on the impact of strained state finances on public infrastructure projects. Uh, he's from Feedback Ventures.